What's going on, brothers and sisters? God bless you, everybody. Um, lately, I've been going through some readings, some heavy readings that the Lord has been putting in my path, jumping from books to books, back and forth. And then I've also been having dreams that I didn't quite understand it. Uh, so I want to share about certain things I come across. And also today, it was about forgiveness, like my today walking around talking to people and everything it was about forgiveness and uh, your first love so so i had a dream yesterday and i told my wife about it and um i quite didn't understand it at the time but my dream was that i was driving home and like in a fog like it was foggy like i couldn't see like maybe 20 minutes 20 feet like ahead so i could see the car in front of me but i can't see it that far but it was foggy i didn't quite understand what that that dream was about until today but um so just keep that in mind the fog you know the fog is just the mess you know but um so today i just been like flooded with verses and i was looking for them like oh and sharing it on my facebook have you read them and uh it's about um what we i've been praying for you know and we'll be praying for like some of us been praying for about world healing right so um i had the vision was um that not everyone is actually praying you know and that's like god's people and non-god's people so god's revealing to me that no one is praying you know very little are praying and so he because of that he can't do anything um so psalm 55 22 uh it says cast your cares on the lord and he will sustain you he will never let the, the righteous fall you know those who believe in him you know he will sustain us in in our faith in him and trusting in him and he will lead us in direction that we must take but in order to have that trust in him we have to believe that he exists so there's a lot of people who may not be praying because they don't believe that he exists and there are some people that are not praying because they don't believe they don't have to pray you know so it's a lot of stuff but god's been taking me to a lot of areas like in Zechariah, Daniel, Exodus, you know, and I just came out of uh, Genesis. I have been doing devotional with my wife and we got out of Genesis about the famine because right now this is famine. And it's coincidentally, we just finished a story of famine, you know, so this is famine. And the cloud in my dream is famine, you know, that because of our, uh, uh, us people who not seeking in prayer, keep delaying and being so stubborn you know um it keeps delaying the healing you know so this could be months maybe years if people don't come in together because there is eventually is going to be healing but the amount of time is up to us pretty much you know because god could intervene he could intervene right now but he's not going to intervene if we're not looking for him to intervene so this is awesome because i'm gonna read you daniel 9 and this is one of his awesome prayers and showing how we had to come in humility. We had to be humble, right? So I'm going to read you 9 Daniel, um, Daniel 9, 4. I pray to the Lord my God and confess, O Lord, the great of and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands. We have sinned and, and, and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servant, the prophets, who spoke in your, who spoke in your name to our king, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The man of Judah and the people of Jerusalem and all of Israel both near and far in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. O Lord, we are kings. O Lord, we and our kings, our princes and our fathers are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. 
we have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants, the prophets, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Now, some of you is going to be like, well, what has to do with us? That's about Jacob and Israel. Well, fortunately, it speaks to us because at this time, it was about his people. And if you understand the walks of, the, of, the, of God and Jesus and all the disciples and prophets, and it's about God returning us to himself. You know, Satan taking all the people away from God. And then Jesus Christ returning us back to God. And so at this time, he had to have a certain nation that was supposed to be God's people because the rest of the world was not God's people. But unfortunately, because of human nature, they kept failing. They kept failing over and over and over. And then judgment came on them and they were sent to Babylon as punishment and scattered throughout the world. So, but Daniel is praying and repentance you know and forgiveness and reminding god that he is merciful and he's compassionate and and he's forgiving and he's he could he, he he promised that he will come and save us and take care of us so that prayer was at the time daniel but not as ours because of jesus christ we are born with him so now that prayer is our prayer because jesus christ is bringing all nations all world back to the god and we had to adapt that you know so read it and it's awesome so as i keep going so now that we know that because of christ we're god's people now we got to go to exodus 32 9. and the thing is once you become a believer and you start walking in the lord you you, you still had to transform you know into god's new creation new life you know consider this as transformation right now the quarantine this is transformation now you know, in Exodus 32, 9, it says, I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are as stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that I, my anger, may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Moses sought the, fav Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. You know, Moses also represents Christ before Christ came to the world. That walks between Egypt, uh, the wilderness, and into um, the promised land is all like Jesus coming for the people of the world, going through the wilderness, getting us to the promised land. You know, that's what it is. This is a reflection. Everything in the Bible is a reflection of ourselves and of God. But, um, but the other thing too, Zechariah points, he put this Zechariah in my mind. So let me read this one, Zechariah 7, 9. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the faith fatherless, the alien or the poor. In your hearts, do not think evil of each other. But they refuse to pay attention. Stubbornly, they turn their backs and stop, stop up their ears. They made their hearts as hard as flint and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Lord Almighty had sent by his spirit through the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. Then when I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I will not listen, says the Lord Almighty. But thanks to Jesus, He's listen. He's listening. We are the reflection of the living God. You've got to understand that we are the reflection of Christ. If we do not listen, then He will not move, and and we will not move. So, let me remind you, Matthew six fourteen. God said, "Forgive those who sins against you, and God will forgive us for our sins." So. One of the things that we understand is that in order for God to move because He's forgiven us and cru we crucify ourselves and believe in Jesus Christ, we also have to reflect forgiveness on everyone else who has done wrong, who has sinned against us. Because when we, when we, for when we have forgiveness on those people, family, friends, 
enemies, whatever, whatever you going through, when we cut that off in forgiveness and release it, God's able to move in our lives a lot more because we have forgiven them, so then he forgives us, so it flows. But we don't, if we like block that forgiveness towards others, then God's blessing is kind of blocked because he can't move that way. That's why he says, forgive those, and Father Lord God will forgive you. So we had to learn how to reflect on that. <clears throat> and it's awesome because in Matthew 18, 23, he, sh he shares this, and I'm going to read this, but right now it's raining and my Bible's getting wet, so I'm going to be quick with this. So Matthew 18.23, this is what he says. This is awesome. Ah, let me see, hold on. It says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As we begin to settle to settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. Cancel the debt and let him go. Kind of like Jesus, right? But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I pray, pay, and I, and he, hold on. Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what he had what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers from your heart. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to have to pause because it's raining and... I'm going to continue, but I want you to really meditate on this understanding of forgiveness and how this plays a part of our life, even right now. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Mwah.